In a Tottenham Leisure Centre, we found the spirit of a better London. Thousands of donations have come in to help those who've lost their homes. Clothes, bedding, towels, pots and pans, books, children's toys. It is the quiet generosity of the majority. Mehmet and Burcin Akbasak need this help for now. They lost everything when their home was burned to the ground. When you look at the building, you feel empty. You feel like you lost really, really everything. But the same thing, it's not about the furniture, it's not about the refrigerator or something like that, but it's about your memories, it's about the things you've been saving from your childhood, the gift you get from your mother to keep it forever, or the gift you get from your husband when you first met. Tottenham High Road is a battered mess, but the clear-up has begun. Everywhere the waste is evident and appalling. A safe is all that's left of what was once a jeweler's shop. It's clear from the accounts that have emerged this week that many people were doubly shocked by what they saw. Shocked, first of all, by the violence, but also shocked by the spirit of malice which seemed to accompany it. The sheer gratuitous vindictiveness of many of the rioters who seemed to take real delight, real pleasure in their own destructiveness. That's been profoundly unsettling. Ornelia Giarratano's hairdressing salon was trashed and looted on Monday. She fled in terror. She told me the rioters goaded and mocked her for looking scared. She still feels insecure. I think I've never been that scared, not even as a child. I've never been that scared all my life. Uh, having to run for your life, not knowing what's happening to your property. Um, I spent all night not being able to sleep. More than half the riot victims I've interviewed this week have been immigrants. A Congolese bar owner, a Kurdish restaurant worker, a confectioner from Turkey. They've all built a stake in London. Why has the same city also produced so many young people with no similar sense of belonging? If the situation wasn't as it was, if we didn't have, we had young people with full employment, if we had youth services here, if we had qualified professionals here work with young people, that wouldn't have happened. Public opinion may not be ready for this. For can you blame poverty without excusing the willful criminality that did this? And this is the room to clean up about the place so what we can. London is calmly picking up the pieces, but the shock of what happened endures. Alan Little, BBC News, London.